if you want to make them, I'm going to show you how we make them. Here's one that we made. We were using basswood. And what they look like is two threaded rods with wing nuts at the top. And this comes up. And I'll show you the cylinder here. And then there's also a piece that pushes the cheese down and compresses it. But what happens here is these springs will hold the weight and you'll tighten these wing nuts down for your tension. Now here you can make a gauge on how much right here you can fasten a piece of metal and when you press down you can make your 10 pounds or 5 pound increments whatever your cheese calls for if you're keeping it at 10 pounds you can always have your line right at the edge of there so um, what I wanted to show you is how I made it these are compression springs wing nuts there's washers and nuts here and washer and nuts here and then I just countersunk that and we drill holes the whole way through these holes on these slats we have like a quarter inch larger in diameter so that way they slide up and down easier if you make them tight they, they'll get caught so and another thing we did was we carved out the center so that all the juice just flies down through this notch right here. I want to show you how we did that. Um, I'll show you the dimensions here. I want to grab a tape measure to show you the dimensions. So what we did, we took a rough cut lumber this cheese press is 13 inches long and it's just a 2 inch block of wood and these slats are 2 and a half inches wide and they're just 3 quarter we cut them out of the same 2 inch block and then they're 13 as well so we cut that block out we planed it and then we routed the edges. Then what we do, I'll show you the jig that we made to get that gouge out of the center in a round circle. We start out by drilling a hole as deep as the gouge. And then the jig has a dial pin glued into it. And that goes on our router. And we'll put this dial right here in the center of our circle and we'll spin it with the router jig on there. I'll show you how it goes on the router. So we'll take this here, we'll put the pin down and we'll have it a plunge cut router. This is just for the edges. So we had to put a different bit on, but there's holes in the edge of the router that you can screw your router fast to this jig. And you just spin it around in a circle. Then when that circle is cleaned out, you just run it around and clean the rest of it out. It helps to have a router with a window glass to see what you're working with. So that's what we use. And then just for the scalp, Also for the router bit we just drill a one and a half inch hole. For the spout where the stuff drains out, we just use our chisel and chiseled that notch out. So it's pretty simple. You can see it turns out pretty smooth. And you just have to sand it when you're all done. We routered the edges and everything. And you got yourself a nice cheese press. And that's how they work. And then you just push that pressure down and let your cheese compress.
So I'm going to show you more on cheese making later. Uh, this is just a start. Um, when I get a chance, I'll, I'll show you some videos about that. But one thing we use, we don't use polyurethane on these, we use mineral oil. And that's healthy, uh, sanitary, um, food grade. You know, you're not going to hurt yourself with mineral oil. So just wanted to make sure you guys see that. You can buy that at hardware stores. And you can just coat it as you need to, but don't use polyurethane, something that will hurt you. And that's pretty much how we did it. We got compression springs, washers. We got washers down here and nuts, I showed you them. We cut these off, I'll show you how, how long I made the threaded rod. We cut the threaded rod at like 15 and a half. That's a good length for the threaded rod to go all the way down into the block. And it's half inch threaded rod, like I said. So, if you want the ultimate cheese press, this makes two pounds of cheese at a time. It's good just for your own homesteading work. <coughs>